So the next thing that we are going to discuss is magnetic susceptibility. Now we've talked about this a little bit already in terms of artifacts and I'm going to touch on that aspect of things again but we're also going to talk about how we can use magnetic susceptibility to generate diagnostic information and do types of functional imaging not just how does it create an artifact in our images. So just to review from yesterday if we have an image the signal in this image derives from right, hydrogen protons that are attached to water molecules. That's where our signal is coming from. We make an assumption when we do imaging is that we put the patient in the scanner that there's a static magnetic field and that that static magnetic field is homogeneous throughout the volume of tissue that we're going to image. We do disturb that homogeneity by turning on gradient magnetic fields to do spatial localization, but we make an assumption that it's perfectly homogeneous. Now the reality is that the interaction of tissue or other things in the patient are going to have effects on magnetic field strength. And that is what we mean by magnetic susceptibility. So magnetic susceptibility is actually a parameter. It's a feature of a given substance or tissue, which you could look up in a reference book if you wanted. We use the symbol X. And magnetic susceptibilities can range on both sides of zero to things that are positive and negative. Magnetic susceptibilities that are negative are things that we call diamagnetic. When magnetic susceptibilities are positive, we call this paramagnetic. Okay. And there are other classifications, such as superparamagnetic and ferromagnetic, which have even greater degrees of magnetic susceptibility and have to do with other features of the substance uh, besides its strictly the magnetic susceptibility of the of the element or, or substance per se. So as an example the tissue that we image is diamagnetic. It has a non-zero magnetic susceptibility and it will cause a alteration in the magnetic field strength. One way for us to understand what this magnetic susceptibility means is by looking at the nature of the magnetic field as described by the magnetic field lines. You may have seen one of these diagrams before where you have a magnet and there are these elliptical lines radiating out from it. So these magnetic field lines allow us to describe two features of the magnetic field. One is its strength and the other is its homogeneity. When the magnetic field lines are close together, the closer together they are, that represents a greater degree of magnetic field strength. When you look at these diagrams, you will see that in the periphery farther from the center or source of the magnetic field, the field lines are farther apart. Right? The other feature has to do with how parallel these magnetic field lines are. The magnetic field lines <coughs> maintaining a perfectly parallel orientation would indicate that the field strength is the same everywhere. So to the extent to which those field lines diverge, we are going to have gradients of magnetic field strength. If we look at an example of a perfectly homogeneous magnetic field like this, and we place into that perfectly homogeneous magnetic field a diamagnetic substance, what happens is that that stuff will cause those magnetic field lines to diverge around it. Right, so essentially it's causing a subtle decrement in the field strength. But most importantly, it's causing a slight perturbation in the parallel nature of those lines and the homogeneity. Paramagnetic substances have the opposite effect. They draw those field lines together. The magnitude of paramagnetism right, extends over a much broader scale than diamagnetism. As a result, right, 
diamagnetic substances have very subtle effects on the magnetic field strength. In fact, the sort of common knowledge that you may hear people say is that a diamagnetic substance is something that does not disturb the magnetic field, which really is not precisely true, right? It just disturbs it only to a very subtle degree. Whereas paramagnetic substances can have dramatic effects on the magnetic field. So as an example, if we are looking at, in this image here, a slice of the brain, and this person happens to have a calcification, let's say. So that area of calcification, first of all, is not a source of the MR signal. Whatever tissue water might be interspersed within it or around it is a source of our MR signal. But the calcium per se that is in there is not something from which we derive signal. However, because of the magnetic susceptibility of calcium, it will cause variability in the static magnetic field strength. And it will cause a divergence of the parallel nature of the field lines of our homogeneous magnetic field, which leads to variability in field strength, dephasing, loss of signal, and geometric distortion. That effect will occur in proportion to how strong that magnetic susceptibility effect is. Notice that the magnetic susceptibility of the calcium in this example per se is not the issue. It's the fact that there is a gradient of magnetic susceptibility between our diamagnetic tissue and our perhaps slightly paramagnetic calcification. So it's having these gradients of magnetic field strength that, ca that cause the problem, so to speak, or lead to variability in field strength dephasing and signal loss. And this will be true if we have any kind of significantly paramagnetic stuff in our sample. So that could be blood, it could be metal. Uh, we could even have air, right, which causes a gradient of magnetic susceptibility. And as we saw yesterday, that the result of these magnetic susceptibility effects at the extreme where we have a piece of metal, whether it's a belt buckle or a hairpin or something else, is that it causes a steep gradient of magnetic field strength and a large amount of dephasing, as well as causing spins to process at different frequencies. So you get signal loss and distortion in the image. What we're going to talk about today is magnetic susceptibility due to paramagnetic substances like blood products, and like contrast agents, gadolinium, because it has right, nine unpaired electrons, is extremely paramagnetic. And they will have profound effects on the image. However, nothing in the realm of what we see with a chunk of metal. So the principal effect that we are going to see is going to be signal loss due to dephasing from this variability in the magnetic field. But the type of geometric distortion that we saw with a, you know, a, a large macroscopic piece of metal on those artifact images is not something that's going to be a feature of the effects of things like blood products and, and contrast agents.